you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to rise to oppose Senate Bill 652. Uh, I rise to uh, mainly communicate to my colleagues who uh, may have uh, uh, not had the time to really digest this bill because of the rapidity with which it's moved, to communicate to those colleagues that this bill is more than a simple change of venue. You've been told here today on the floor, we heard in committee, you've seen it in the, the media, that this is just a simple move. We're gonna take the Court of Claims and we're gonna move it from the Ingham County Court to the Court of Appeals. And, and, and aside from all of the, the, the issues that may be uh, brought up to, to assail the wisdom of that kind of move, uh, certainly it's a blatant political power play, but leaving that aside for a moment, I would encourage all of you to make sure that you understand all of the ways in which this bill changes our system of justice in ways that have nothing to do with change of venue. So I'm gonna talk about three different things, increasing costs, diminished access to justice, and diminished accountability for the government. One, increasing costs. This bill is rife with increased costs. You heard yesterday about the provision that allows the appointment of special masters, special masters that are gonna be appointed because these judges which we're foisting these cases upon are not experienced in trial matters. And the cost of hiring those special ma masters to do that work is going to be passed along to the taxpayers in the state of Michigan. That hasn't been budgeted for. We've already heard about moving cases that are already in the Court of Claims. We've got litigants, not just the state of Michigan, not just the Attorney General's office, but our citizens who've been trying cases in court, and now those cases are gonna be moved midstream to a different court. That's increased cost for the state. That's increased cost for our citizens. It's not fair to them. And then finally, in, in the area of increased costs, we have um, section 6421. I would encourage everyone to look at section 6421. This deals with the joining of cases. Oftentimes, in cases against the state, there's also a uh, corollary case against an individual. And currently, the law is that the judiciary can choose to join those cases into one case. And oftentimes, those cases actually get sent back to the local circuit court where the case was filed. Now, what we've changed, or what is being proposed to be changed in section 6421 of this bill is to allow either party to the case to refuse to have their cases joined. That means that in almost every case, the state is gonna refuse to have these cases joined, and you're gonna have two separate cases dealing with the same incident proceeding in two separate fact-finding courts. If, if you can't see the confusion and the additional cost that can ensue when you have two different sets of fact-finding courts, I. I I don't know what else to tell you, but there's certainly increased costs with Section 6421. And we shouldn't be stopping the joining of cases. We should be encouraging more efficiency in government. We should be encouraging cases to join together. All right, my second point is about diminished access to justice. And, and you heard earlier uh, one of my astute colleagues uh, mention that this bill increases access to justice. I, I, I really cannot fathom that, that analysis. Um, one of the things that I would point you to that will make this incredibly clear if you're willing to read the bill is section 6419 on page 9 of the bill, section 6419. What this does, this section sweeps up all sorts of claims into the Court of Claims that don't currently go to the Court of Claims. So currently, if you're a citizen and you're suing the state on a FOIA claim, you requested documents from the MEDC on what sort of companies were getting funding from the state, from the people of Michigan, they refuse your request, you sue them to, to free those documents up and make them available to the people. Those cases, by statute, go to the, the circuit court in which you file them. So in other words, if I file that case in my community, that case goes to the Washtenaw Circuit Court by statute, not the Court of Claims. So I can have my case heard in my local court with a local jury, local judge, but what this, judge, what this bill does is this sucks all that authority up into the Court of Claims, and it has more of our citizens going to a statewide or regional court, if you will, rather than their local courts. And it's not just FOIA. We've heard of a number of situations. It's FOIA. It's Open Meetings Act. It's the Whistleblower Protection Act. It's the Persons with Disabilities Act. There is a raft of different statutes that the legislature over the last 30 years has created and said, we're going to create a statutory right of action for citizens in their local court for good reason because we know that in their local court, they're much more likely to get justice than they will in the state court dealing with the Court of Claims. And what this action does, if we vote to pass this bill today and it's signed by the governor, that's gonna suck all those cases out from our local courts and up to the Court of Claims. How does that improve access to justice for anyone? It doesn't, it does the opposite. 
So I think we need to ask ourselves the question, do we want more cases determined locally, or do we want more cases to go to the Court of Claims? Because this bill drives hundreds of cases into the Court of Claims and away from local jurisdiction. I don't think anyone here really wants that. That's why I'm trying to direct your attention to Section 6419-1A. Imagine a situation, we heard about the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. Imagine a situation where an employee of the state is fired from their job because of their sincerely held religious beliefs, right? We've got someone who's, who's, a, who's a deeply devout Mormon, and they're, they're in a job working for the state, and they get fired by their supervisor, and their supervisor says, I'm firing you because you're a Mormon, and I don't believe in Kolob or whatever, right? Currently, currently, that citizen has a right to bring their discrimination claim in local court. Once again, having a local jury, having a local judge who's accountable to local voters make that decision. This bill sucks that authority up into the court of claims. And instead, that citizen is going to have to have their discrimination heard by a judge that's handpicked by the chief judge of the Supreme Court. Does that make sense to anyone? It, it, we certainly didn't hear a single judge stand up and say this was a good idea. So, once again, we need to ask ourselves, do we want more cases decided locally, or do we want more cases decided in the Court of Claims? This bill sucks up hundreds of cases into the Court of Claims, dragging those cases away from judges who are accountable to voters in our communities, making our citizens drive further to go to these regional court centers, rather than having their cases heard in their local court of jurisdiction, which is open every day, not just occasionally, as is the Court of Appeals. Finally, I want to talk just a little bit about diminished accountability. Um, <clears throat> the previous speaker, my astute colleague, um, mentioned that um, you know, this bill furthers the unchecked power of the state. And this is one of these issues where you know, sometimes the wings of the political continuum can sometimes meet. And I'm concerned about this issue. I do not want to diminish the accountability that the state government has to its people, right? The state government works for the people, not the people for the state. And this bill makes it harder to, do this, harder to sue the state. It makes it harder to sue the state because we're increasing costs. It makes it harder to sue the state because we're sucking cases out of local courts and bringing them up to the court of claims, making people drive further. It makes it harder for, pe for citizens to get access to justice because they might have to have two different cases because of the new rules on Joinder. It also expands the definition of what the state is to include employees as state actors to make it harder to hold individual state employees accountable for their actions. So do we want to expand the power of the state or do we want to diminish the accountability that the state has to its citizens or not? This bill diminishes the state's accountability to the citizens and it's wrong. So I just want to ask my colleagues, when we took that oath at the beginning of the year, we took an oath to work for the people. Does this bill work for the people? If you're going to do the work of the people, make sure you read the bill. Make sure you understand what these provisions do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.